Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment. Thank you. Rough Rider recently brought out the Easy Money series. This is a collection of pocket knives featuring shredded U.S. currency under acrylic scales. They asked if I would share my opinion, and I immediately agreed. They then asked which knife I would like to review, and after some contemplation, I chose the canoe. The other knives currently in this series are a Trapper, a Congress, and a straight razor. I have to admit I was really tempted by the razor, but ended up going by my old standby, the canoe. We'll talk more about these other knives later, but for now, let's look at the RR1890 Easy Money Canoe. As you can see, I collect canoes, and that's why, when given the option, I chose the Easy Money Canoe. And that's mainly because um, I wanted to see exactly what the knife was like before I went and picked up other knives in the series. And what you see is the uh, shredded U.S. currency underneath the acrylic here. And it's acrylic, it's not celluloid, so there's no real problem with shrinkage or gassing out. Anytime they talk about celluloid these days, it's usually acrylic that they're actually talking about. And this is the uh, front side of the uh, canoe, which usually has a shield on it, but this one does not have a shield. Um, and that's mainly so you can see the U.S. currency. You notice the nickel silver bolsters here, they're pinched and they have a ring. The front side has the Rough Rider R also there. And when you turn the knife around, it's basically a mirror image. So you once again have the Rough Rider R on the right side here. So this is the reverse side. You can tell that because the pin blade is on the back side of the uh, canoe. And this is the front side or obverse. And that has the main uh, spear blade. And let's take a look at the spear blade real quick. You notice the match striker pull up there, the easy money uh, etch, which is a very simple etch, but it looks pretty cool. And then you have the Rough Rider R's there. And as you notice, it has a half stop. So the blade stopped at the half stop. Then it opens all the way up, closes, doing the same thing. Backside, you have the pin blade, which is really more like a small spear blade, also with the match striker pull, Rough Rider double R tang stamp, also on the half stop. And I didn't mention here on the other blade, but you see here the swedge. And you have that same swedge on the uh, spear blade. You see there 440 razor sharp steel and the uh, pattern number, the 1890. If you notice, the blade has no wobble whatsoever. Nice half stop. Same with the back blade, no wobble. Really clean movement on it. You got your brass liners, stainless steel back springs, pinned with uh, brass pins. You can cut, you can fill them a little bit. They're a little proud, but they're rounded off so there's no like hot spots or anything. Same on the back side. Thumb goes right across. You know, you're not catching your nail on it or anything. Really just a real solid, well-made knife. And uh, nickel silver bolsters are slanted, look really good too. Very happy with it overall, and I really do like that half stop. Something you don't see on many canoes. Um, and it's usually, it used to be a sign of a high end knife when it had a half stop. And you have the swedge there, that's also a really good thing. That actually allows you to poke a little bit easier with the swedge on the top. Another sign of the old fashioned high end knives that you would see back in the uh, like 1920s through the 1950s and such. So really solid, well-made knife. And uh, for the price that they're asking for it, it's, it's, I don't know how they can do that because it's such a really quality, well-made knife. You can see that movement, it's just perfect. Not really a nail breaker or anything. You have a good resistance, but it's nice and tight, but yeah. 
opens really smooth. And that half stop works really well. Very happy with it, very pleased. I'm going to uh, take a look at some of my older uh, Rough Rider knives and also a case knife for comparison. So hold on for that. So what we have here is uh, is my case canoe. This one has the uh, peach seed uh, scales and uh, a chrome vanadium blade. And it has the little uh, Native American on the uh, canoe paddling. So you've got a canoe on a canoe. I've done a review of this knife. It's a really solid, well-made knife. Um, does not have a half stop. It's a little tight. I probably need to do a little cleaning and oiling on it. I haven't done anything with that for a while. But really, a good knife. Can't complain about it whatsoever. Um, Size-wise, let's look at the blade thickness on these two knives. Um, side by side comparison, you can see that the uh, the case blade is just a smidge thicker. Otherwise, the dimensions are about the same. The uh, Spearmaster on the Rough Rider is a little more pointy. Uh, this one is almost has a better drop, and it drops a little bit beyond the uh, the center. The spear blade on the Rough Rider here looks like it hits right in the center. Lengthwise, they're the same though. A um, little bit more of a kick on here. Not much of a problem though. So, the main blades are about the same. Obviously, you can see the the finish is slightly better. Actually, the, the nice and rounded here, which is good on the scales, uh, the peach seed uh, wood scale, uh, bone scales. Back blades. Oh, that was stupid. Let's open it back up. The back blades, size-wise, about the same. Again, the uh, the point on the uh, Rough Rider is a little sharper. Thickness-wise, actually, it looks like the Rough Rider might be a tad thicker. Obviously, the swedge uh, makes the blade a little thinner at the top. But the Rough Riders uh, pin blade is actually a little thicker than the the one on the uh, on the case. Now the case is using chrome vanadium blades, so that's a a 1095 carbon steel um, as opposed to a 440 stainless steel. It has chrome vanadium added for uh, a little bit more on the to keep it a little gives it a better stainless quality and a few other items to it. But it's basically a carbon steel so it's definitely got a better blade on it but the case is also in the 50 to 60 dollar range as opposed to the around 14 bucks or less range so that's a big difference on there here's um one of the rough riders i want to show you this is the one in the feather collection you see the uh it's got the file worked uh back springs and once again there's no um half stop on it and that's the thing with a lot of the older rough rider canoes they do not have a half stop and it's just a basic blade and everything good knives and everything but there's something to be said about having the half stop in the swedges on the blades on the uh, rough rider knives now it's a just makes the knives a little bit more elegant and a little bit uh a better quality than what they used to have. The knives were great before, but now with the half stop and the swedges, it's just uh, a, a step up. So definitely worth having on the knives and uh, all around just a terrific addition to an already great brand of knives as far as I'm concerned. I mentioned that there were three other knives in this series besides the canoe, and I will uh, talk about those in just a minute. But before I do that, there's a couple other knives that I would like to see added into this series. And the first of those would be this knife here. This is the uh, Rough Rider um, locking work knife, which is based off of the old uh, locking side buster made by Case. And I think this knife would just look great in this series. Just imagine instead of tortoise shell, 
he had this money scale going the whole length of all that uh, because it's bolsterless you have so much uh, scale that can be covered with that and I think that would look just great especially if you uh, if it was lacking the uh, the shield in the middle there you got the brass uh, bird's eye rivet up here and the other brass pin showing up and then easy money all the way down the length of that that would just look great and um, it almost be you know working for your money because it's a work knife so I think that would uh, kind of work really well with the easy money theme to have uh, this big work knife like that or even the smaller work knife that they have but I think the bigger one would look really great in the easy money series so that's the first knife I'd like to see in it and obviously I want to see a scout knife and a and a large toothpick in any series that Rough Rider puts out they already know that but the other knife I'd like to see in there would be this and I don't think Rough Rider makes a, a stiletto if they do I've never seen one but I think this would also be a great knife for a series like this a nice uh, stiletto especially a five inch stiletto imagine that with those easy money scales too that would just look really good at least in my opinion it would so those are the uh, two knives that I'd love to see in the Easy Money series, the Stiletto and the, the Locking Work Knife. So let's look at the other knives that are in the series. The RR1885 is a 3 and 3 quarter inch Congress featuring a sheep foot blade and a spear blade for the main blades and then two pin blades for the secondary blades. The Easy Money Etch is on the sheep foot blade. Next up is the standard Trapper RR1884, measuring in at 4 and 8 inches. It features your clip blade and the spade blade, and as you can tell, it has the double match striker pulls on both blades. RR1891 is a straight razor, and because of that, it will not have a half stop because straight razors are friction folders. The straight razor is six and a half inches long with a three inch blade. At six and a half inches long, it's gonna really look nice with all that easy money underneath the acrylic. And that's one reason why I'm planning on picking this one up. And just to recap, the canoe is RR1890. It features a two and a half inch long spear master blade and then a secondary two inch blade that is also a spear blade. Okay, this is more or less an afterthought, but this is the uh, box that the Easy Money knives come in. And it's one of those nice magnetic boxes. Now, when you get your knife, it's going to be, you know, you've got this uh, foam fitter here that your knife will fit nicely into, which is pretty cool and everything. But your knife comes in this little plastic bag. Uh, I'm with the school of thought that says that these plastic bags are really not a good idea for your knife. Um, the plastic like this has a tendency to um, attract humidity and we all know that humidity and steel really don't mix even if it's a stainless steel blade they can still rust and stain it really is stain less not well not stain at all so if um, if you're getting the uh, series and you're planning on keeping them in the boxes at least take the plastic bag out and just put your knife in the box and, you know it'll look just as nice so if it's a presentation piece or something but for long time storage just ditch this plastic bag i wish rough rider would do with their uh, 440a stainless what they did with the classic carbon series and that is uh, have the knife wrapped up in paper I think that's better. Number one, it's a little bit better for the environment, but I'm not that big of a deal on that. But, you know, using an acid-free paper to store your knife in is a much better idea because the, uh, the paper actually will wick humidity away from the knife as opposed to attract it to the knife. So if you're thinking about storing your knife in the box, consider either re at least removing the plastic but consider 
finding some uh, nice acid-free paper for wrapping knives and wrap it up in that instead. But really, nice cool box. Um, it was an afterthought for me because I usually don't collect the knives for the boxes, but this is really a nice box for like pre uh, presentation for a gift or anything of that nature. So pretty cool box, but lose the plastic around your knife if you want the knife to uh, last a little longer. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats, and if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.